Then we're at the best question on the paper again in mathematics. Well, in CSET mathematics. And in CSET maths, this is the best paper, the best question on the paper, which is statistics. It says calculate the value for X, but let's just read the question now. It says students in a group are asked to name their favorite sport. Their responses are shown on the pie chart X, for football, X degrees, cricket, and tennis. This is crazy. How can track and field not, how can, how can the best sport not be on this pie chart? Now that's just crazy. But ignoring the craziness, let's go ahead and finish the question. As we all know, track and field is the greatest sport, but let's just ignore it. This must be, I don't know which school this is, but these students are definitely crazy to say tennis, but ignoring this and answering the question, find the value of X. So to find the value of X, first thing we notice that if we add up 94 and 45, we get the total that represents cricket and tennis. So adding 94, so let's go ahead and do some addition. Adding 94 and 45, 94, plus 45, of course, put your degrees, that's equal to 94 plus 45, that is 139. That's 139 degrees. So what are we saying? What we're saying then is the value of X is total angle in a circle is 360 degrees minus the 139. And so what we're actually saying is 330 minus 139, which is 221 degrees, that is going to give us the value of X. All right. Now, what percentage of students chose cricket? Now, let's look at what percentage of students chose cricket. Now, first and foremost, 94 degrees out of the 360 chose cricket. So what that is telling us then is 94 94 divided by 360, 94 divided by 360, multiplied by the total amount of students will tell us how many chose cricket, all right? Oh my God, I erased it, my mistake. Okay, let's continue. So we're saying 94 out of 360 times the total amount of students. Well, it, well, let's not do that. It don't ask for total amount of students. It's asking for percentage. So multiply it by 100 to get percentage. So multiplying it by 100 to get the percentage, this is equal to 94 divided by 360 times 100. That's 26.1. So 26.1% of the students chose cricket as their favorite sport. Now it says, given that 40 students choose tennis, calculate the number of students in the group. 40 students choose tennis. No, that's just crazy. Imagine that 40 students choose tennis. Now, what that is telling us, therefore, is that 45 over 360 times the total amount of students is equal to tennis. So this is what they're telling us. Remember, tennis was 45 degrees. So 45 degrees out of the total 360 times the total amount of students. Let's call the total amount of students T. T stands for total. I'm calling T for total. 45 over 360 times T. And that's equal to 40. All right, this gives us 40 students, all right? Now, all you have to do is make T the subject. So since we're multiplying by 40, five over 360, we're just gonna divide now instead. So the total amount of students 
is equal to 40 divided by 45 over 360. And that's gonna give us the total amount of students in the, in the survey or in the group. So we'll work that out now. 45 divided by 360. And we're getting 320. So it is telling us that 320 Pitney in this group and 40 of them crazily choose tennis. And then 26.1% of them choose cricket. So if we check it out, in reality, they're telling us that 0 0.261 times 320, that means 83 boys chose 83 boys chose cricket, 83 chose cricket, 40 chose tennis, and a whole of 197 chose football. A whole of 197 chose football, that's crazy. But that's irrelevant news. That's that. Now, part B, of course, usually is either a histogram or a, a frequency polygon, or maybe it's a cumulative frequency. Always look out for that in part B. So here they give us a frequency polygon, all right? And this is representing, it shows the number of goals scored by a football team in 25 matches, all right? So the number of goals scored them not score no goal in five match. So 20% of, wait, in five match, they don't score no goal out of 25. So that means that 20% of their matches, they're not scoring any goals. This team is not good. Now in seven games, they score only one goal. Now that's awful. That means they must losing a lot again. In three games, they score two goals. That's not bad. Three games, they score three goal. In four games, they score four goal. In two games, they score five goal. And for one particular opponent, they score six. That must be one of them schoolers that just start playing Manning Cup. Let's just be real. If this is Manning Cup, one team make a six love, that team probably just start playing the sport. Then they ask us, what is the modal goals scored by the team? So the modal goal scored is which one of the highest frequency one imagine that this team modal score is one that's pathetic we're just saying we're just being critical of the team so the modal number of goals you can't even say goal goals really should say goal because they're only scoring one so the modal number of goals is one goal per game which is awful. All right, that's the modal number of goals, one. That's just poor, one, oh gosh. But we're not being too critical of them. We let it slide. Next thing it asks is, determine the median number of goals scored by the team. Now to determine the median now, to determine the median. Really and truly, it's best when it's arranged in, when you write out, when you write out the, how, much, the how much goal they score in order. That's usually the best way to find the median. You write out all 25 of them and you find the middle one, all right? Write out all 25 scores in order, which would be five is here and seven, that's 12 games. So the 13th game or in the middle right here, the 13th number would be, this is three. So the median is three. Hope we all understand. Let me write it, let's just write right here. So the median, median position, median position is the median position is n plus one divided by two. 
All right, so that works out to be the 13th position. In this case, N is 25, because they play 25 match. All right, and so the median number of goals is two. All right, you're wondering why two? How did I get two? Look, five plus seven is 12. But we need the 13. We need when n is 13. When n is 13, that's three. They scored three number of goals. So when you arrange it in alphabetical order, the 13th element in the set, if you want to look at it that way, will be three. All right? And if you don't feel comfortable with doing it this way, you can actually be boring and write it out like this. Write it out like this. How much match they score? No goal, five games. They write zero, 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 zero. And then they write, oh, how much goal they score? One game. One, 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 one. Because they score. Play seven games and score one. How much goal they score? Two, 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 two. All right. Then how much game they score? Three. Three game. Three, three, three. How much game they score? Four. Four game, four, four, four. How much goal, how much game they score? Five, that's two. Five, five. How much game they score? Six, one game. So that's one six supposed to be there. I didn't even realize that they didn't finish complete the table for us. Didn't even notice that we we're supposed to complete the table. It was three games they scored two and I think two game here, so that's 12, 15, 18, 22, 23, 24, yes. So to do the median, this is what we do, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So this is the median number of goals they score, which is two. Did I write two around here? Yeah, the median number of goals is two. So you can do it that way if that make it better. Then calculate the mean number of goals by the team. There are two ways you can calculate the mean. You can use this formula. The mean number of goals is the sum of f of x over the sum of f. That's the mean number of goals for the team. All right? And usually they call the mean bar x. The mean is to them right bar x. I might say them put a dot over it. So what's the sum of f of x? The sum of f of x in this case would be, you can use a table five, to, five, time, five times zero plus seven times one plus three times two plus three times three plus four times four plus two times five plus one times six. So write that down. That is the sum of f of x. The sum of f of x is five times zero Five times zero plus seven times one plus three times two plus three times three plus four times four plus five times two plus six times one. That's the sum of f of x. And then we divide it. We're going to divide it by the sum of f, which is the total number of games, of course, which we know the sum of f is 25. So you do that calculation, and that's the mean number of goals that they score. So 5 times 0 plus 7 times 1 plus 3 times 2 plus 3 times 3 plus 4 times 4 plus 5 times 2 plus 6 times 1. Then we divide that by 25. So the mean number of goals that they score is 2.16 goals per game. So 2.16 goals per game. Two point one six goals per game. That is the average number of goals that they're scoring per game or per match. That's not bad when you look at it, 2.16. But how many were they conceding? That's the important statement. Also, you could find the mean by adding up all of these and dividing it by 25. So add up 1, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9. 
11, 13, 16, 19, 22, 26, 30, 34, 38, 43, 48, 54, 54 divided by 25, 54 divided by 25 is 2.16 goals. So you could do it that way as well. Now there's one thing I just want to point out because statistics is my favorite topic in mathematics. I just want to point out to you this, look at this, the mode number of goals is one, the median number of goals is two and the mean is 2.16. So the mean is greater than the median, which is greater than the mode. So what can we can conclude? We can conclude that the data is not symmetric. You might wonder what I mean by not symmetric. The data is skewed. Anytime the mode and the mean, the mean and the median differs, then that means the data is not symmetric. That means it's not evenly distributed. All right. Just think about it. Think about what that means. All right. So if you want to know more about statistics, my advice to do pure mathematics, do additional mathematics, do applied mathematics.